Welcome to the realm of magic and mystery, classic horror and sci-fi. You are now entering the House of the Unusual podcast with your hosts, Eddie and Joe. Welcome everybody to the House of the Unusual podcast. I'm your host, Joe Pavlansky, and with me as always is the maestro of Mail Order Mysteries, Eddie Guevara. Today's returning guest is the amazing horror magician, Chuck Caputo. Hey, guys. Our special guest today and his first time on the podcast is Tom, a.k.a. Dr. Saab. Gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. So, Dr. Saab, I know we uh, talking before this, you've done one video with us, but uh, no podcast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to you so you could tell our audience a little bit about yourself and, you know, what you're into. Okay. Well, I'm uh, I'm a New Jersey native uh, like Eddie. And uh, what I'm into is magic, uh, mail order mysteries and uh, gags from the 60s. Um, and that's how, that's where my connection was made with Eddie. Now, now, uh, Tom, I, I see, uh, we have an entire collection of, um, if I'm correct, Tanyo magic, except for a few that, items. That's correct. Yes. So, uh, when I was a kid, I worked in a, a, a friend of mine had a, his father had a store in Elizabeth. It was a variety store. And he, his father wanted him to sort of get into selling stuff. So he gave him a little corner in the store and he started selling magic. And Tanyo was one of the magic tricks. And that's a company that's in Japan. And they started selling products in the 60s to the U.S. market. And if anybody, I Chuck, do you know about Tanyo? Yes, absolutely, Tom. You know what? Uh, their their effects are really, really good. You know, uh, I think uh, Luber Fiedler developed quite a few of them, if yes. I'm not mistaken. And he was a brilliant, brilliant inventor. Yes, the fa- one of his famous one is is the floating rock. That's an excellent effect. Yeah, that's yeah, very, very really good. Really cool illusion. So, um, so yeah, so uh, Eddie, uh, I, I sent you a list of the ones that I have. I think the the ones I collect have T numbers on them. Those are the ones that were sold in the U.S. And the, the original ones started with T1. It was just a, a thimble and basically some instructions on how to make it vanish. But then they started manufacturing uh, some really high-quality plastic. Uh, mm. A lot of magicians call them toys, but you never want to say that to a tenure, tenure collector. <laughs> <laughs> But they're really they're they're very clever, and uh, I started I, I started collecting some back then, and I never really stopped. But some of them are very difficult to get and find now because you oh, know. Kids, hey, yeah. how about the prices on them, Tom? I mean, they oh, they went yeah. they went through the roof about thirty about thirty two years ago. I used to use Sidetrack Jumbo Sidetrack. Oh, great! For, yeah, for my walk arounds, and you know what? It I used it so much it fell apart. And I tried to get another one online. They're like three hundred dollars, three hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, it's crazy. And you never. I bought, I bought never... mine from Magic Incorporated, like in nineteen eighty six, eighty seven, oh, for like wow. for nineteen ninety nine. It was about twenty bucks. That's amazing, boy. If you only knew, right, Chuck? You yeah, bought, bought a hundred of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good trick. You just never want to close it. You know, when you have the gimmick out, you never want to close that's, the book. <laughs> you know what? That's it. That's exactly what happened to quite a few friends of mine. They actually closed it and they put a crease in there, you know? Yeah. That's that's, it. Yeah. So I was always kind of paranoid about that. You, you had to think before you closed that thing, but you know what? That was a neat effect. And there's a, there's a small pyramid trick that I, that I, uh, I would use once in a while for close up where you put a Mark coin in and it, it would vanish from the base and appear into a pyramid. Do you remember a little plastic pyramid? Oh, sure. That, yeah. Yeah. That was a, that was a really cool one. And there's a, a box, a black box with two upright clear tubes and you and you put the different colored balls Mar- in, but the, the marbles one, yeah 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 a little more and they would jump yeah. the one would jump into the other tube and really the way clever. that the, the way that worked was so clever it was unbelievable yeah their gimmicks are are really amazing i mean even yeah. as a magician but you look at them and you go wow how could someone yeah. have thought of this yeah absolutely let, let me ask you a question tom the picture i sent you that one can you that i have the haunted house do you, do you remember it do you have that yeah, the little baby haunted house. It's the, pur- <laughs> the purple one, right? With a ghost yeah, in it. Just, yeah, but did you see the one I sent you, the photo of the one I have? Yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. It's okay, cool yeah, stuff. 
yeah, that was really like a really rare one that I was able to get. Um, so saying, you know, coming across uh, all this stuff, I, I know that we had talked in the past about dark rides. And now I know Tom and myself mm -hmm. have, have been, I guess, in New Jersey and you too, Chuck, in, in Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania area have rode most of the original dark rides from the 70s. Oh, yeah. Mm, We're talking sure. about you know, amusement parks like uh, Asbury Park, New Jersey. Uh, Kingsburg. Uh, Coney, Kingsburg, uh, Coney Island. Point Pleasant. Uh, yeah, exactly. Now, Seaside Heights. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll start. <laughs> I'll start real quick when you said the Kingsburg. The Kingsburg Haunted House, according to what is written on the internet and what I've been told, was the last uh, haunted house that was around. Now, I think right now, as of Hurricane Sandy, I'm not sure if they reopened it again, but that haunted house back in 2000, I was trying to acquire it from the original owner. So I went there and I said, hey, listen, if I want to buy the haunted house, you know, like who owns it? So they said, well, the guy who owns the, not the hot dog stand, the popcorn stand over there is the owner. I go <laughs> there and he, he tells me, well, it's actually my father's and I took it over and now my daughter runs it. So the father apparently, you know, passed away and stuff. So the, the, the house was like almost like almost 100 years old. And um, the daughter, uh, you know, I said, hey, would you sell it to me? I offer her a few thousand dollars, and uh, the answer was absolutely not. And I said to her, "What do you What do you want it for?" I mean, you're and she goes, "I, I pay my college with it." So I, I thought it was interesting, and I'm kind of glad that I didn't get it because just a few months or about a year or two after that incident, well, I mean, not a year, a couple of years, whatever, Hurricane Sandy came and destroyed it. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I would have been flying away with the house, you know. <laughs> so, so, Eddie, you and I have talked about that haunted house, and, and I visited that many times as a kid. And there's there's funny things that stick in your mind, and it was the smell of that place. Do you remember that, Eddie? There was this smell well, when you would go inside there. Yeah, I made, I made a point. Every time I went into that Kingsburg, which I had a house in Kingsburg, by the way, in 2000, I had it for about three years. But every time I would go to Kingsburg, especially when my oldest daughter, who's now 35, was young, I used to love going there because, you know, $10, $15, they rode all day. <laughs> it mm -hmm. was cheap and it was nice. It wasn't as dirty as Coney Island and it was uh, a little safer, you know. So the situation was that um, I would ride it at least three, four times. So, yeah. <laughs> it's I'm, funny. I'm pretty, I, I thought it was funny when I thought, you know, because you go inside and the doors bang open, you know, and you're riding around right. the little car and, and it's going around and, you know, making all these noises and turning hallways. And one day I, I take a flashlight in there <laughs> and I wanted to snap a picture. And when I turn it on, the darn thing is about 12 feet, 25. Yeah, feet. <laughs> it's all an it's, illusion, right? Yeah, it's an illusion. It, it's all like yeah. a spiral spaghetti. Uh, well, that's what they that's what they call them. They call them spaghetti. The, the, the guys who design these, they call them spaghetti rides because it, it, all it is is an illusion where you think you're really traveling through this really long, big building. And with the darkness, it just it really fools you. It does. It does. It does. You know, what, Dr. Stop, that, that, that's funny you say that because I remember going to uh, now we have uh, where I'm at in northeast Ohio. We had one of our big fairs is the Canfield Fair. And I remember in the 80s and even the early 90s going to the, those kind of rides at the fair. And, you know, they would have the real huge front with, you know, the real nice, you know, painted graphics and all that. It'd be huge. Mm -hmm. I remember one time, you know, looking behind it, you know, just out of curiosity. And I seen how small it was. And it was like a, it's a tractor. Yeah, tractor trailer. Probably, yeah, because, you know, I remember riding and I'm like, you know, you're in there for a few minutes and you're going all around and you think it's huge. And <laughs> when you actually see it. It's this small little thing. And it, you know, I, I'm like, how did they do that? You know, it was pretty, it was really amazing. Right. Yeah. Amazing. I'll tell you what, guys, we have one major theme park here near Pittsburgh. And I think we talked about this before, uh, Joe. It's called uh, Kennywood Park. Oh, yeah. And oh, they, God, yeah, yeah, and they had two two uh really cool uh type of uh dark rides one burned down about 1975 it was called the ghost ship it was really cool you, you know what like you'd, you'd sit into the standard chair it would slam into the doors it would take you through all the stuff it was pretty cool and the other one was called la couche it, you know what if i'm not mistaken that 
that that's French for uh, uh, for uh, uh, dungeon. And uh, but that just they just discontinued it about twenty years ago. That one was really cool because because the, the chairs were those those old red leather type of chairs, and you sit in there, it would take you up the tracks. And one strange thing did happen. I remember probably about 25, 30 years ago when I was on that thing, it got stuck inside and the lights came on and I seen exactly how small that thing really was. I mean, like there was tracks all around the room and it really didn't leave one big room too much. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, yeah. it I mean, it, it, I mean, it basically went up, a, it went, went up a hill and you'd go near some stuff and then you got on the other side of the room and it did finally go into maybe two or three other smaller rooms, but it's amazing how small those things really are. Mm -hmm. And uh, cur currently they have something called the gold rush. I think it's still there where you would ride partially outside. Then it would take you inside. And about 10 years ago, Kenny would added some type of an effect. It's like a shooting type of thing where you're sitting there with your spectator next to you and, and you each have a, like an infrared gun and you shoot at the targets when you go through, you wow, know, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a, you know, like there's a piano player that would activate, there's bottles you would knock over, you know, and so forth. And it would actually score. So, you know what, it would be like a battle between the person sitting next to you to see, to see who got the big, uh, you know, the best score. But that's uh, but that's basically what they have in Kennywood now. I mean, things have changed quite a bit in the last twenty years or so. Well, I think you guys on a prior uh, podcast, uh, I think Eddie, you brought up the Wacky Shack. A lot, oh. a, a lot of a lot of places had Wacky Shacks. Yeah, and they were designed. They were, they were designed by this guy called Bill Tracy. He he designed a lot of the effects that were in these amusements during the sixties and seventies. Chuck, did you ever go into Wacky Shack? Yeah, we love Erie. You know what? My wife and I love to go to Erie, Pennsylvania, and we go to Waldemere Park, and they have the Wacky Shack there. That's really cool. We go on it every time we go there. I mean, uh, that, that, I mean that's an iconic ride. Uh, people love it. You know, the lines are big, and it's exactly like you said. I mean, it, you know, it's it, it's a really it's a really cool ride. Mm -hmm. Do they have? Is I don't know if the effects inside are the same. But there's uh, the Hell's Kitchen where it's a uh, it's like a demon and he's cooking somebody in a big pot. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly right. And there's a room with different type of fluorescent uh, things with the black lights and so forth. And you know, oh, that yeah, that was really big in the in the '60s and '70s. The fluorescent, uh, everything yeah. was painted with. So the Wacky yeah. Shack that I went to was in uh, Wildwood, New Jersey, and Wildwood is almost at the end of New Jersey. Uh, it's on the Atlantic, uh, you know, the Atlantic ocean side. The other side is the Delaware river side or Delaware Bay. And, right. and Wildwood had amazing amusements. And this was in the sixties and early seventies. And it was like the precursor to Disneyland because, you know, Disneyland opened in 55 in California, but on our coast, it would have been Disney world. And that would have been somewhere probably 71, 72. Right. And Wildwood had these amazing, theme rides wacky shack was one of them and uh i remember in the wood they had a woman who was getting cut in half by a, a buzzsaw but it was longitudinally along her whole body not like a cluster <laughs> stuff. Uh, that would be cool <laughs> and that was like a bill tracy effect there's actually a website that uh it's called funchase.com and it has all of these uh, effects people send in pictures from the amusements in uh, Wildwood. And it's pretty it's like, I guess over the years, you know, people have memories and they send stuff in. And like, when I go to that site, it just brings back memories for me. Of yeah, going through cool. these amusements. Yeah. You know, Tom, you know, Tom, we took the kids to Bush gardens, I guess about 15 years ago and they had a, a form of a dark ride there, but it was like brought into like the 21st century, a uh, 20th century back then. But it was, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but you, but you'd sit on a chair, it would take you in and there was a gigantic screen that you'd go in front of. And, and I think you wore 3d glasses, I think if I'm not mistaken. So, you know what, it kind of looked like everything was coming at you. Uh, uh, the uh, temperature changed in the room. Uh, you know what? It actually felt like you're flying. I mean, it was really, really cool. That was about 15 years ago, and I don't remember the name of it. I, it kind of slips my mind right now, but I don't know if you're familiar with that or what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think these dark rides are getting – well, now with the technology that they have, they can really, they can really juice them up. There's, yeah. a, there's a new one in uh, Wildwood. It's called Morbid Manor. 
and the, and the graphics and uh, these are fun houses. This is probably a newer walkthrough type fun house. And I have friends that have gone there and they said it really is scary. Like they have a guy hanging from a noose. It's a real guy. And somehow they've got him hanging up and he's spinning around. And it's, wow. Yeah. And then, of course, yeah. anytime you add live people to a walkthrough dark ride, you, you, you definitely elevate the fear factor. Absolutely. Isn't there a isn't there a group? I think it's called Daffy. It's the dark ride and funhouse enthusiast that you know that you can join. I, I remember yeah. seeing that a few years back. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Okay. It is. There's there's also a magazine called ha Haunted Attraction, um, and that particular magazine uh, lists all the dark rides and stuff. But what you're talking mm -hmm. about, Chuck, uh, with that updated dark ride, I think there's one in. Um, in Walt Disney, I'm not sure if it's Universal or where, but I, I think I'm, I'm, see, I might be confusing it with the King Kong ride, where it's really, really. Now, one thing I want to tell you though, one of the problems that they had with the walkthrough dark rides back in the day when they had the Haunted Mansion in Long Branch, they had uh, Brigantine Castle in Brigantine, New Jersey, is a lot of people were getting hurt. Some of the, uh, oh, of the people. Yeah. Yeah, so I, yeah. I personally yeah. like dark rides that you ride the buggy. Right. It feels like, you know, better than walking in. Because I remember one time, I, I think this was, if I remember, in Asbury Park, actually, where when you came out of the fun house, if I remember, there was a section at the end that was all mirrors. And it looked like a force field from Lost in Space. Mm -hmm. And I went, Papu, right into one of the glass men and, and a big giant bump in my head, man. That, that really hurt. <laughs> So, that explains you know, I, a lot, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, I said to myself, man, I, I didn't really like the, the, especially the one with the glass. We, they always have the maze. In oh, Kingsbury. the maze. Oh, the mirror maze. Yeah. Yeah, sure. but I'm saying, but I think in, in Asbury Park, when the Haunted House ride was over and you were leaving it. You, you went through to, the maze. Yeah. yeah. If I'm yeah, correct. I, I've, I've been through that one. Sure. And uh, That's, I, I just want, you know, I want to just say something about the Wacky Shack, and I don't know if they all had this, but at the end, <clears throat> before you before you left, there was a there was a toilet and there were hands coming out of it. And it said, goodbye, crew world. <laughs> <laughs> well, they I believe. I believe I remember that. But I know that if you go into a Johnson Smith catalog, there was a guy inside the toilet, like a character, and it was called <laughs> Goodbye Cruel World. Do you know which one I'm talking yeah. about? I, I, think I, I think I do remember that. Yep. I had that sucker. I still have it probably somewhere, but it was funny. You put it in there, and it's like, Goodbye Cruel World. <laughs> you know, the, the guy who runs Fun Chase, he actually makes miniature versions that you would see in these fun houses. And he's he's made I believe he made a miniature version of the Goodbye Crew World toilet. It it it's just amazing what people will do. Now who's that? Was, who's the person? Well, it, uh, I don't know the guy's name. He runs the Fun Chase. It's called FunChase.com. It's that website. I think I had sent you guys that link for that. Well, there was a guy that was sending HO scale little haunted houses, and I saw one of them. I'm like, wow, one of the the, the dark rides. So I sent away for it. And when I got it, it was uh, about the size of a quarter. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and I paid thirty-seven dollars for it. You know? it but like, was it, it was really it really nice. allowed? I mean, was it no, was no, it done nicely? Not. It was made, it was made up. Uh, and they um it, but you know when you look more. at the picture, yeah. When you look at the picture, <laughs> it's actually the size of a matchbook box. But when you look at the picture on wow. eBay, it looked like you were gonna get a, a model kit of a of a dark ride. I can't, yeah. I can't believe you fell for that, Eddie. I mean, yeah, I you, know all about, you all don't know about cardboard. cardboard well, stuff you know what? I'm, I'm going to take a picture and I'll send it to you. In fact, if you look, I think it might be on the website as I do the tour of the my collection. If you look towards the left, you might see it. It's right on top. In fact, uh -huh. on top of, a, of, of some blank CDs that I have there, the spool, and you'll mm -hmm. see the little dark ride on top. And I was so excited to get it and and when I got it, the flag on top of it was a toothpick. 
That's and amazing. I got to the toothpick was, I mean, it was a good job. They did a really good job on it, but not for $37. Holy smokes. Wow. <laughs> wow, man. I stayed with it because it looked good, though. <laughs> but it was it was a steal, man. But um, you know what, Tom? You, you Another thing you had talked about in the past, and which you had mentioned, you know, with the dark rides and stuff, yeah, the cemetery. Now, we know Chuck is an avid a walker of cemeteries. Uh, oh, fact. yeah. I was there. I, you know what? I was early this morning, you, you know, he, in, be, in between rains, walking the dog. <laughs> he, he's related so, to the Adams family, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Eddie, we, yeah, you and I had talked about. Um, so, when I was a kid, I grew up in central Jersey, and um, there was a park, Milton Lake, actually, that was close to my house. And Milton Lake has a river that runs into it. And there was a tr part of the park runs along that river. And on the other side of the river is a cemetery. And when we were kids and, and we would, uh, especially on Halloween, you know, we would go out there. And one year we got the great idea. And it wasn't an official monster ghost, but we made our own monster ghost. And we uh, strung it up in a tree next to the cemetery and we got, we got the little kids that would come through there and we told them, oh, yeah, there's a ghost in there. And then somebody would pull the string up. And, you know, it was it was actually creepy when we were doing it ourselves. But because the cemetery has um, a lot of the graves have those candles on them. Yeah. And so and we were doing this, you know, Halloween, it's already dark. And when and when we were doing Halloween, they didn't have the, the time change like they do now, which is I think it's after Halloween. So uh, that's a really uh, interesting cemetery there. There's actually two cemeteries along the way. So you have a park on one side with a river, and you're sandwiched in between. There's really nowhere to go when you're on the trail. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you a question, Tom, since you're from Jersey like me. Are you familiar with the Union City area at all? No, I, I haven't really been up in that area a lot. Okay. Do you remember there's a monastery called, it was the old St. Michael's Monastery? <clears throat> when I, you think, got I, think, to... I think you and I talked about this. Oh, well, the... yeah, I think we did. I, I thought, because I was going to say, uh, the St. Mike, it used to be St. Michael's when I went to school on um, the eighth grade in Union City, because I came from New York City from Washington Heights in the seventh grade. I, we moved over to Jersey. And uh, even though we still had an apartment in New York and we would go every <clears> weekend <throat> out there, because my stepfather had a, a son that he would go see. So we would go stay in that apartment. So we lived in both places for about 10 years. And the thing that was interesting is that I went to the school, St. Michael's grammar school. And then as I, uh, you know, the, the monastery was attached to this monastery there, this huge old church that's like a hundred and something years old. And it consisted of an entire city block. Now back, uh, back in 2000, I think whatever it was, they sold, the back area and stuff where there was a cemetery included. They're like this monastery is still standing there because it's obviously it's a historical uh, wow. uh, place. And in fact, Weird New Jersey one time, some of the guys from Weird New Jersey broke into it. And they were probably, you know, and, and there is an article in, in Weird New Jersey about it. I remember reading it. But the thing is that the, uh, the thing that was interesting was that the cemetery was so old that when they went to coffins and stuff, to move it, they actually found nothing. So wow. I just think they just picked up the ground and, and replaced it with new soil, and that was it. But it was so what really it, old. No one knows what happened to the coffins. I I think it was all it's so old it just perished. Yeah. Whatever, I know? tell I tell you what, if you if you think about it, people didn't have <laughs> uh, have the cement bolts like they have nowadays. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so when when somebody was buried you know, 80, 100 years ago, whatever, it was just a wooden coffin pretty much. And you know what, if it's in the ground all those years with no cement bolts surrounding it, I mean, it's it's just going to deteriorate to nothing, I guess. I mean, no, but wow. you think that, but you think they'd find a few bones, you know what I mean? Or Yeah, I, sure. I don't know if they did or not, but I know that they, they funny because uh, one time uh, they built like a complex around the, the church, right? They built, uh, especially in the back there, they built a basketball, not a basketball field, but a, uh, a football field and they had a uh, one of the carnivals and 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 that's what i when i told joe that i had seen there was a 24 foot straight job truck the guy had designed the truck uh you know outside it said the black hole 
And then he had a little flip down um, staircase in the back of the truck that you walked up. And then you had the same effect as, uh, you know, down in in most amusement parks, which is like a tunnel that spins. Right. But what you did is you walked along the center spiral thing that was supposed to be like, you know, like a black hole. Like you're falling into the black and then you came out of the front. And um, I thought it was kind of funny because my, my mother-in-law was there and I said to her, uh, be careful, you know, because she's really scared of stuff like that. And I said, be careful because it could be a bone. <laughs> um, you know, she goes, oh, stop saying. But I, I thought it was a funny story, you know. Uh, but yeah, I, I got to tell you, man, and that's another thing. And, and I'm sure you guys remember this. Don't you guys remember, especially your time in New Jersey and New York, and I'm sure you guys in, in Ohio and Pennsylvania had this. The truck would pull up. It was like an army truck, and it had the we um, uh, what do you call it? Chairs in the back that would spin around. It was like a ride, just like Mister Softy. Oh yeah, I remember that absolutely. Uh, yep, yep. What, what? That was like for for li- like for little kids, right? It was a kitty ride. It was a kitty was, ride. Was, yeah, it was a kitty. A yeah, kitty yeah. Ride. When we were little, you know, it was fun to get on those rides. Big deal. Sure. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of these rides are designed were designed to move to carnivals, right? You know, mobile. I, I, keep them mobile, right? Because I, you know, when carnivals would come into town, like I guess Joe, you in your area, you would mostly have carnivals coming out there. You know what? Not that I I remember uh, carnivals. I know circuses every once in a while, but not that I remember for for carnivals um you would have you know some of the people come in for the the local fairs or or festivals but nothing like a um you know a traveling carnival or anything like that nothing that I remember no. uh, mm-hmm. going to or knew about you know coming around but you know maybe prior to the 80s there was stuff like that um considering you know uh, trains were real big in the area so I don't know if any came you know by train track or you know how they would would have came in or anything but no nothing that i remember mostly just festivals and fairs mm. no joe joe what we're talking about would be just like a regular uh arm not an arm when i'm saying army truck those trucks the army you know they're square in the back and they carry the soldiers and stuff yeah i don't remember i don't remember anything like that i think mm. in fact if you google it you probably see pictures of them because they're probably still around today it's just a truck would come and it would have like the we you know like uh <clears throat> Little chairs, you sit down on it and they spin around, they spin around. It's a ride. So basically it's it's a portable. But one thing I want to tell is if you if you go to the um the Meadowlands Fair, which comes out once a year and it stays there for about eight weeks in the Meadowlands, they always bring two or three dark rides on on you know on the um mm-hmm. their tractor trailer. Yeah. Yeah. The and only they, thing they, and I, and I I always go to ride them, but you know what, Tom? The thing that sucks about them, which is kind of funny, they're not dark at all. <laughs> Inside, it's got more light than outside. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> and I mean, well, you know, really if you if, if you're going on a dark ride, you want to do it at night, typically, right? Because even oh, during yeah, the day, but I, rides, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know, I go there whatever time, and I, I want to get in it. You know, of course. Sure. But yeah. I understand what you're saying, but but the thing I want to tell you about those dark rides is that they just look the, the graphics on the trucks themselves is is beautiful. And just oh, right now, one the guy was asking twenty nine thousand. He jacked it up to forty nine on eBay. It's been there since last. Uh, yeah, I it. looked at that one. I looked at that. Yeah, I almost honestly, Tom, almost, <laughs> almost considered getting it a couple <laughs> of times, and I was like, "Nah, I'll be broke for the next two years." You know, <laughs> where but, are you going to uh, park? Where are you going to park that, Eddie? Oh, well, oh your you know, wife. Your wife. You worry about after you buy it. <laughs> oh my god! No, I, I the I had a, the house I had in Kingsburg had a hundred and forty foot driveway. Oh, that would have fit in there. Would I swear I would have <laughs> kept it there? But I mean, the problem is you need a tractor trailer to jack it onto. But you know something, and I I was talking to Dave Harvest about this, and and I'm still honestly uh, telling him about it for the last give or take 30 years that I've always wanted to open a magic shop when I did. And I did have a map, but I've always wanted to have some type of portable dark ride. And the reason I wanted that is because popular mechanics used to have an ad shame on me for not ordering it, but it said how to construct a portable dark ride that you can carry in back of a pickup truck. 
and you know mm. and take it to carnivals and i've always been intrigued with doing something like that um and <laughs> i don't know that, eddie that's pretty no, crazy <laughs> no 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 it's, it's in, in kingsburg okay in kingsburg this guy he, he built stock rides he about a few years ago uh gosh i don't know i think it was around 2005 around or so he set up and now kingsburg charges uh, when i did inquire about two years ago again fifty dollars a month for a space now kingsburg is still an amusement park that's you know it's one of the oldest in the country and it's still there it still gets as good amount of people coming in so what i wanted to do is you you, you pay 450 dollars and you get a space in in the park so what I wanted was to have some type of, of a ride there and stuff. But the guy who told me about it, he built a haunted house there. He put it up. I, I think it took him a week because um, it's all prefabricated and he had it. But the, I think that what killed him was that he was charging, if I remember, eight seventy five or $10 per person. In Kingsburg, it's, it's called the poor man's boardwalk. People that go there don't like to spend big bucks on, on any type of ride. So he was yeah. only there for about a year, and then he faded away. Well, all the rides there are like a dollar fifty, two dollars. So you know that's what you expect to pay. You can't go in there and start charging nine, sure. ten dollars. But it does. Oh, so this was this wasn't a mobile unit. This was something that was no. Uh, no this oh, was I a gotcha. walk through. When you walk through, and, and this was kind of crazy because it was a walk through, but it was totally light, lit up. It wasn't like. You went into the one room and he had, you know, that this is a very common thing you see in haunted houses. Uh, the guy and the, there's an old man and an old woman sitting in the couch and they're rotting away like a skeleton. <laughs> and, and I'm sure you guys have seen this. This old sure. Movie. And yeah. then you go, you go to another and he had a, a chair with a with it looks like a body of some lady there and the lady's head is floating on top of some glass thing and she has all these tubes coming out of her body. Um, the the headless it, lead, something like you know, that. Ed, you know, Eddie, the guys that design these rides, they have they have names for all these different effects. Like if you yeah. you you can actually send for a catalog. Like there's one called a nitwit. That's the name of the the gag. And what it is, it's a woman in a chair, and she looks like she's knitting. And from the you just see her from the back initially, and she looks very nice. And then she spins around, and she's got no face, and she's knitting a spider web. It's called the nitwit. <laughs> That's, That's cool. cool. There, there's one called That's trash really cool. can trauma, which is where the trash, you know, which I'm talking about, the trash can pops <laughs> up, and then, you know, here's right. the thing, Tom. I got to tell you, Tom, I have every single how to build your own haunted house book <laughs> out there because I buy them and I look for them each year. I mm -hmm. the original my favorite was how to build a financially successful haunted house, and um, and this is funny. Uh, Phil Morris is the magician that basically wrote that book, and together with somebody else. Although the actual copyright of the book is owned by another person, uh, it wasn't Morris Costumes who owned it originally. And the thing that happened with this is that, that you see, I got contacted by. Um, I forget when it was. There is a guy named Michael Epstein. He's a producer of B movies. And he's also one of the guys that started kick crowdfunding, the crowdfunding called Kickstarter. So this guy, uh, if you look at him, he has the look of um of an interesting person. He's got a, a big mustache. Uh he, you know, he's a really cool guy. And um what happened was is he contacted me and we were considering making a movie. Uh, which was going to be, I, I have to look because I, I still have the contract there that we were going to sign. And he wanted me to co produce it with him. It was called, I think, Sea Monkeys and and Life Chimps in the Mail, something like that. It was all about mail <laughs> order. And what I was going to do that was very interesting is, is Craig Taubeck from, um, you know, from, from Johnson Smith knows. Philip Morris very well. In fact, he stayed in Philip Morris' house a couple of times. And through Craig, I was able to connect with Scott, his uh, Philip Morris' son, and he's also the one that runs Morris Costumes. And I wanted to go to North Carolina where Morris Costume was, and I asked uh, Michael Epstein if, you know, 
down and he was going to come down from Boston. He was located with the whole fa- filming crew. And we were going to go over to North Carolina and film Philip Morris, uh, Craig Taubeck. I, I, I was going to have David Hoversat from SS Adams and myself, all four of us was going to, you know, we were going to do this. But through a previous experience that I did have in the past, not to mention what it is here, I thought I was not going to let really, I didn't want anybody to own film rights for something that I was going to put together. You know what I'm saying? And I kind of let it go dead on that. And the poor, you know, the bad thing about it is that Phil Morris passed away. So obviously that's not going to happen anytime soon. But the thing is that in all honesty, that book, the How to Build a Financially Successful Haunted House. What makes the book such a phenomenal book is it shows all those tricks we're talking about and all those effects, especially mm-hmm. the one, the one, the most popular one is what they call the Pepper's Ghost. In fact, I own four different books of the Pepper's Ghost, in which one is called The Ghost. It's selling on eBay today for like seven hundred dollars. I have that book. I have, um, I have several. Oh. Of them. I think, like I said, four of them. Well, Pepper's it, wasn't Pe- Pepper's ghost was like an old effect using mirrors or something, right? The, yeah. the Pepper's uh-huh. ghost is also the it's also the same technique they used in amusement parks when, uh, like, to was, make uh, spirit spirits no, appear. No, 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 right? no. A man transforms into a gorilla. Oh, you, you understand the pepper? Basically, what it is. Is and Chuck, I think Chuck, <laughs> Chuck actually was going to give me a, uh, one of them. I think that Chuck has a miniature version of it. Am I correct? Yeah, Chuck? yeah. You know what? I have one that's about thirty-six inches square, but uh, maybe a little, even a little bigger than that. It was built by Wilcox Magic in North Carolina in nineteen seventy-nine. You know what? And for different uh, shows, like I actually made like a a life-size skull up here. You know what's cool about it is is it is it works on uh, rheostats. So it, you know what? It's a chain-driven motor that's silent and and uh then it's you know what it's not a mirror it's it, it's a plate of glass it has a slight silver frosting to it so so the lights in front would get bright and, and the lights behind would get uh, dim and vice versa so it would it would make something gradually appear almost like star trek when it's a you know a beam me aboard it would like have a, a like a little like a little stardust Look wow, it. It's that's a really, cool effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah really, really cool. Uh, Robert Houdin, who's the father of modern magic, he actually used one. The, the, uh, the, the sheet of glass would extend across the whole stage, so he'd make a group of people appear and uh, vanish and so forth. And it's it, it's a really cool principle. I'm, like, I'm did surprised. they did they ever use these at those uh, you know midnight spook shows? Yeah, uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. That, that's where it came from. I, I'm kind of surprised, Tom. I thought you would know that. Because uh, well, I, I always thought the effect was done on mirrors. Uh, no, 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 no. I think the way Chuck explains it, that I mean, that sounds really cool. No, yeah. well, see, it's done with mirrors, like like Chuck says, and you have a big plate of glass. But this was actually made famous in the spook shows. And the big thing about it was a man transforming into the wolf man. Like the same thing, mm-hmm. like you were seeing Abbott Costello, how, you know, Lon Chaney transforms. Sure. But the biggest thing that they used it was the gorilla. The the man was it. T- well, it was a was it? it was a woman that would turn into. I've seen that That's show. It. They used to right. do that at yeah. county fairs. So right. you, Chuck, you're saying there's actually when this thing goes off, there's actually an exchange of the person, but you don't see it. Right. You could you yeah. could you could make like Eddie said, like you could make a person's face uh, visibly change. Piece by piece, slowly, slowly, it'll it'll transform into like a wolf man or or a gorilla, okay. Or or if you if you don't want to do that, what you can do is make something appear gradually appear, and it's 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 like really spooky the way it happens. Uh, what I would do is make a life size skull appear, then I take it out. You can physically, and you know what? And I had it hooked up to a a, a transmitter and receiver. I'd make the jaw clack where it would answer questions. If you <laughs> if you if you search my thing, like this is a video that I made probably 12 years ago. It's on YouTube. If you search magician Chuck Caputo uh, Houdini magic or or a Houdini uh, type of thing, I, the the uh, blue room I have is actually on there where the skull appears and disappears. And uh, my my son filmed that, and it was at least 10, 10 years ago. Wow! How old is that? How old is that uh, fact, Chuck? Originally, when did that officially uh, like appear? 
Oh, that goes back to the 1800s. Like I said, Robert oh, Houdin yeah. used it in in 18, 1875. You know what I mean? So yeah, you mm -hmm. know. I, I, uh, but they didn't they didn't really have lights back then. I guess they would mask mm -hmm. jets. You, you know what the gas jets or something would do? Would glow? You know. Uh, I think Chuck, uh, it's it, you. You're quite correct about that. I think it was like 1840 something. Yeah. But you know, so that you got a better understanding, Tom, of what what it is. You think of a corner in the room in your house. You take the corner, the, the right smack in the corner, right? And you put a glass, a glass pane that would be, it goes from the roof of the corner. It doesn't have to be that high, but it would go at least eight feet out from the and It's corner. at an angle. I'm it's sure. at an angle, exactly. At an angle. Yeah. And then what you do is you put lights in both sides. And then you put a switch that dims the light in one side and, and exposes the other side. Oh, and then cool. Vice versa. Yeah, and that oh you know, Eddie, we gotta build one of these. <laughs> I I've done in fact, Chuck, I, I have to drive to Chuck's house to pick that one up because I still want it. <laughs> yeah, but, that's um, not what it's you know yeah. what if, you, if you've ever ate like at a fast food restaurant, you know, this this is how I found out about this. When I was a little kid, I was sitting like in a McDonald's and it got dark outside, and I was and I was like up against the window, the plate glass window. And you know what? Uh, the window turned into a mirror. You know, I was about an eight-year-old kid. I'm looking, and I said, "What is going on? How come I could see my reflection all of a sudden?" That that that's, is exactly what a, that's exactly what a blue room is. That's really cool. Very cool. And that, and that is the effect that's been used in. They use that same effect. And let me tell you, if you go to Lake George, New York, uh, which I went, excuse me, I went up there with David uh, twice already. They have the House of Frankenstein up there, which is a museum. But, and I, you know what, I, I actually took a video of it. I'm, I'm going to have to upload that into my YouTube channel to show it. But they have, this is broad daylight. You go into, and, and what happens is like a museum. And when you walk up and down the corridors, it has little glasses, and, I mean, little glass in, uh, showcases. And you look through the little windows and there's different displays inside each one. Like, you know, monster displays and stuff. There's one that shows a window. And window in an attic and out of nowhere a ghost pops up right in the center you see the spirit traveling up to the door and back it's phenomenal and it's what they use is that same effect and in fact the haunted mansion in california and the one in florida from walt disney uses the same effect in the dance room where the spirits are up in the top it's yeah the same yeah thing. right I mean, it's amazing if you think about it. They're still using that technology. It still works. Absolutely. And, absolutely. Yeah, it's pretty wild. In, in fact, a lot of the early 1900s, uh, uh, what do you call those people? Those people that spoke with ghosts? What was the name of those things? The, the people oh, in the... Oh, uh, you know, like, a, I guess, I guess like a medium, a, a spiritualist. Me, a medium. Mediums, mediums. Oh, my God. For a second here, we were professional... Uh, storytellers and we forgot the name of the most important <laughs> mediums, right well yeah the mediums used to actually trick people with the pepper's ghost illusion and that's why there's so many books written on it in fact the the main book on it is called the ghost just that yeah. the ghost and mm -hmm. it will tell you that's the whole cool. story of the pepper's ghost and like i said i, I have <laughs> i have them all because every time from I think uh, from the first time I bought and, and I bought it because in, in 1989 I used to sell how to house from Morris Costumes in my magic store and I used to sell it in mail order and I, I bought in fact I probably have like 10 20 of them left wow. but um, is, I, I, is that uh, is that particular book a very thick book Eddie is it a lot of pages or is it uh, no it's what? not absolutely not in fact Chuck if you like a uh, uh, I'm sure I can grab one and send it to you. It's it's about 140 pages, yeah, and it's soft great. cover. And you know they've made different versions of it. Like the one has an orange. It's all the same thing inside, but the artwork is is phenomenal. The artwork is is awesome. It's uh, the exact artwork that we like from Ghost and stuff yeah. from the 50s, 70s. But um, I would buy after that anytime, especially around Halloween. I go around Amazon, and anytime I get a thing that says how to build a haunted house. Or how to haunt your house? Book. I wow. paid thirty-seven dollars for a book, fifty dollars for a book. I have over twenty different titles on how to build a haunted house. So hey, 
Hey Joe, maybe maybe we can get to get this effect and and have a monster robot up here. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! That that get him get him. Time for a drink. Take a drink. <laughs> it's time for a drink. You know, it's funny. I got today. Some guy emailed me today. I think I, I forwarded to uh, to Joe. Um, if I'm correct, I, I got it today. It was interesting because the guy writes me. Um, I was trying to see if I if, if I could come across it. Uh, but the guy wrote me. He says I'm 64 years old. And, you know, so you guys are doing a phenomenal job with the, uh, you know, with the podcast. He says, I listened. And one of the things he goes, I grew up in the time of mail order and the golden age of mail order, basically. But he goes, what was that deal that four to six weeks for delivery? He said, was, <laughs> did they do that because they didn't have the products? And I actually wrote him back and I told him what it was. But, you know, now that I'm actually talking about it i'm sure he's listening to us because he looks like he's an avid listener first of all i want to thank him for listening to us and the answer to that is that back and i know this is a fact i own the original fun factory is that a lot of times they would run ads to see if the product sold if they saw the product being advertised by other mail order companies they would run an ad and hope to see how many orders they get if they couldn't fulfill it on time, what they would do is they would just tell the person or give them credit for another item. Uh, the, the, um, hmm. I don't want to say, well, the guy's name is Ron. I don't want to say his last name. Was this, this, this. He wrote here, he put, Eddie, I enjoy your podcast immensely. I'm 64, grew up doing mail order comic zenith years. One thing I've always wondered was why mail order in those days took so long. The four to six weeks was indeed suspenseful with anticipation. What was it that they didn't have products? Wow. Uh, uh, to Johnson Smith probably only needed four days max. Might be a good discussion topic, he says, in the future. Great work. Uh, wow. but the, the uh, hey, Eddie, but, you, you mm -hmm. got to remember, though, what did it cost to ship stuff back then? You know, oh, you, yeah, shipping it like 25 cents, 50 cents. Yeah, I, yeah absolutely. I, I always thought it was the post office. <laughs> oh, this yeah. is, a 20, you know, 25 no, no, cent no. order. Um, <laughs> but that was the longest four weeks in our lives, wasn't it? When we were kids. Oh, we were yeah. oh man. That, you know absolutely. what? It, it, yeah, but you guys got to understand one thing. It's even still practice today. When you're going back, well, a good example. Uh, a few years ago, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago, when my son was younger. He was like 15, actually. Not 15, 13. So about 10 years ago. Um, here's here's what happened. There was in back of a cereal box. I forgot who it was. I don't know if it was Honeycombs or whatever, that they could get a license plate with their name on it. And you send away for it, and you still had to wait four to six weeks for delivery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They still do that today in a lot of cereal boxes, and especially the reason for that is because Two things. Back then, and I'm telling you, because having a mail-order business back in 1989 uh, with, with, with Lou Wise when we started the Fun Factory, you know, he taught me the ropes. And, and I also learned it from Edwin Wagman, who owned our house, when I once spoke with him and stuff. And the way you did it was that you would send out bulk mail. So what you did is if you had so many orders, you need a minimum of like 20 orders or something like that. They would wait on the orders a week or two before they even shipped it out to have enough orders. A uh, good example of that was when I used to sell the Venus flytrap. Now, the Venus flytrap, uh, I had to buy 48 at a time. So if I bought too many, sell them, they would die because the Venus flytrap, man, you're lucky if it doesn't die within a week or two. You have to give it a lot of sun, very hard to upkeep, but yet it was a so what I would do is I would buy Venus flytraps. And here's the funny thing about it. I was able to learn in the early 80s how to ship them. And not. so what I would do is I would buy the Venus flytrap. They came in the little pot that had a little cup over the top. And the little cup, since it, it had like a cardboard, it would allow me to put it in an, in an eight, uh, four inch by, oh, no, I'm sorry, eight inch by eight inch, a priority mailbox, whatever it was. And send it to the person, and it would take three to four days for them to get it. And honestly, I never had a person, except one person one time told me, hey, when I got it, the dirt was all over the place. But he, <laughs> he put it back together. But everybody got those things. But the point was, is I would make them wait two to three weeks for delivery because I needed enough orders to buy 48 of them. 
and, oh, and that's gotcha. what the, the, the other thing they did that the people waited was like like Lou. Lou said to me one time, I said, Hey Lou, I saw you sold the seven foot ghost. He said, Hey Eddie, we only ran that to see if it would sell, but we never had the ghost. So they ran ads in comic books, oh, you know, to see how many would sell, and then they they would just improvise and give them another thing. So that was done by the fun factory. Edwin mm. Wagman told me. Well, we used to test the item first and see if it sells, then we produce it. And he said with them, I think the second meeting I had with them in 1985. Um, and I, you know, and then I also saw it through. So the yes, the thing is that most companies at the time would just run ads. And you know what I did it myself in the beginning in 1980s? I would run ads in popular mechanic, popular science. I would write the ad, talk about the product. And you know what the funny thing was? A week later, I would start putting the product together because I didn't even have the product. <laughs> I think a lot of probably, yeah, you learned from the best, though. I bet you a lot of the, like you're saying, these guys were doing that, you know. They I'd, were. Yeah, sure. I mean, that makes sense, right? You want to test well, something in, out first. In, in one of the future podcasts, which it might be next week or the following week, I'm going to try to get Lou Weiss and Craig Taubeck, which, believe it or not, they're like uh, the only people left that are alive that ran original 1970s uh, mail order companies. And Craig Taubeck, as people know, was kind of like the CEO of uh, Johnson Smith for about 40 years. And he's the one that had all the catalog, put all the catalogs together that me, you, and all you guys, you know, bought from when we were little. There was a ghost ship down in Wildwood. It was called a pirate ship. And the only story I have from that, it was a, it was a walkthrough. It was actually a ship that they built. And when they first opened the ride, up in the up in the yard arm, they had a guy hanging from a noose. And so many people thought it was a real person. They were complaining about it because the kids were really freaking out when they would see this. So it was like, yeah, this is the kind of stuff and that I guess used to happen in the 60s. Not exactly. That would be a had, really dark I... ride. <laughs> No, well, it, my... it, it was actually a it, Joe it was a pirate ship that you walk through and it had animated like animatronic pirates. They had this room in there. It was a tilted room. You walk through it and you felt like the room was tilted. They had these you walk through like uh, like guardrails. But in the That's way it was cool. set up. That's yeah. Neat. You know, yeah, I they, remember they... something like that being at, at, at uh, our local fair, you know, maybe around the eighties or, or not early nineties where you walk through it and everything was tilted and it kind of makes you almost like off balance. Like, you're yes, just, you're, you're off you know, you're trying yeah. to adjust to it. Yeah. It was really, really <laughs> weird. I mean, I mean, I think I used to see people falling from there. I mean, they also had every dark ride had the barrel that was rolling, you know, and oh, you I walk to, through I this. Love those. I love yeah. the barrels. That was I mean, one of my I, favorites. We used to put our hand, you know, put your hands and feet out. You know, yeah, like, and try to and, right, and hold on and there. spin around, right? You'd see kids falling on their heads all over the place. And the, <laughs> guy, you know, the guy in charge say, "Hey, don't don't do that!" And you just see a bunch of kids falling everywhere. Tripping <laughs> over each other. Well, you know, I don't, you know, I don't. I bet you some of this stuff you you couldn't do today uh, because of the liability. Yeah, uh, they that's still have it. If you don't know, they still have it. I told you guys, if you go to Walt Disney, you still have the barrel. I no, but I mean, do you, but are you walking through it, Eddie, or are you yes, riding? Yes, walking through. You're walking, walking through, through it. it. They have it on a uh, Universal. Wow. Um, it's like it's called the. Uh, if I'm correct, the ride's called the uh, Ruins. It's a phenomenal thing, and you go. But let me tell you one thing: the hanging guy in the news. That's what. Up, I had one hanging guy in the news right there, <laughs> and, and, and I bought the head from um, uh, Morris Costumes, and and it was a cutoff head. I added the body to it, and the mouth is all open and stuff, and we put a noose, and we hung him right from the top. Now, the magic shop I had looked like those old-fashioned uh, stores in most neighborhoods that uh, they were, like, green in the front, and it looked like, you know, the old pharmacies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that it was. But now, about a dark ride, and this is why I kind of, like, cut in right now in the middle here. Do you remember the Dracula ride in Wildwood? The Castle Dracula's Dracula. Castle? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Dracula. Dra right, uh, it was called Dracula's Castle. It burned down, yes. The uh, absolutely, I rode that. You know, that ride, before the, that castle was there, uh, the, underneath, there was the Tunnel of Love ride. It was, a, it was like a gondola boat ride that you got in. And what, what they did is they converted that into like a horror ride. 
So the, the boat was on the bottom, but then on the top you had the Dracula's castle that that you was a walkthrough ride. Eddie, after that ride burned down, I went down there. It was it might have been in the fall, and it was really eerie because all the props you could see some of the props. Wow. Uh, and they were like melted and, or the faces were, uh, you know, burned off. And I had some photos somewhere and I had to see if I could dig them out. But it was really, really creepy to see that. And it's kind of weird because on the Jersey Shore, every every once in a while, something's got to burn down. Did you ever notice that, Eddie? <laughs> yeah, well, we're talking yeah. about that, Joe. Uh, Joe yeah. We're talking about it. Uh, every house looked Brigantine Castle. The Brigantine, the- yes. And the one in it, the one in uh, a Great Adventure burned yeah, down. Yeah, but that was sad. Eight people lost their lives in that. Yes, place. very very sad. Yeah, hey, Eddie, you know a... what? I tell you what. There is one thing that that will not burn down. There is one thing out there that will not burn down, and that the is the house of the unusual. Not only the house of the unusual, <laughs> but a sea monkey's castle. Oh <laughs> no! Because they are underwater and they're that. not going to burn down. That's you know true. What? We are at the. We're, we're heading towards the bottom of our podcast here, and we've had such great conversation. I didn't want to butt in, but I'd really like to get to some of our friends and affiliates uh, real quick here before we wrap things up. So if you want a castle or something that doesn't burn down, head over to c-monkeys.com and get your underwater sea monkey kingdom. They always have tons of great stuff coming out, some uh, new combination packs, some new... Uh, aquariums for your your little sea monkey friends they got shirts mugs puzzles postcards you name it they're always coming out with something uh different and if you're in the mood for something stupid like all of us usually are head like over today's to, conversation yeah different <laughs> head over to stupidcomicsmagazine.com and that's stupid of course spelled s-t-o-o-p-i-d Issue number four just hit the stands not to, or well hit the online stands not too long ago, and there is a beautiful full page ad for House of the Unusual in there. So we definitely want to thank uh, Ski for putting that in there for us, and uh, we look to many more issues. So head over to stupidcomicsmagazine.com and you could order. They have five issues total out, zero through four. Uh, at a very good price, and it's a combination of Far Side, Cracked Magazine, and Mad Magazine all rolled into one. They're absolutely fantastic. Also, if you are looking for some magic books, you know, for the history of magic, anything like that, head over to our buddy Dave Haversat's website, which is 1878press.com, and that's 1878press.com. Tons of great books on there for great prices. Uh, Also, we always have Chuck Caputo on here talking about his magic. And if you want to see him performing some of those tricks, go over to YouTube and head over to Caputo, and that's C-H-E-R-I, and you can find Chuck's uh, magic tricks. And Chuck, is that where you're updating most of your your videos on that site? Yeah, you know what? I kind of switched to Shuri's site about the last year and a half or so. For some reason, I don't know, it's, it's... It seems like it's a little more, uh, uh, you know, more conducive, convenient. Awesome. Well, everyone could head over there and check out your videos. We also have some stuff up under House of the Unusual on YouTube. So just type in House of the Unusual on the search and you'll find us. And, hey, that's about it. So we are down to about 30 seconds here. So I just want to thank everybody for joining us. Chuck, Dr. Saab, Eddie, once again, thank you. Everybody out there in podcast land that listens to us, thank you. Uh, if you're listening to us on your your favorite platform, you know, subscribe to us, give us a uh, a good review, a good like, you know, whatever you got to do. That way, we keep doing what we're doing, and more people find out. So, Doctor Saab, Chuck, Eddie, thank you guys for joining us. Some great conversation. Uh, great, yeah. great All right, now, thank now you. Thing real quick, Joe. If anybody like to support our channel, there is a link for support and well. In the anchor platform. If you guys awesome. like our show, we can help us every way we can because we want to make this a regular thing. So, having said that, good night, guys. All right, okay. guys. Good night. Yeah. Good night. God bless. God bless.